All right. Um, well, the Tuesday, December 18th, 2018 meeting of the Wilmot Public Library District, please come to order. Um, Jan, will you call the roll? I will. Trustee George? Here. Trustee Rogers? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee O'Laughlin? Here. Trustee Barshus? Yes. Yes. And we'll note that we do have a quorum. Um, mm -hmm. All right, uh, the first item is uh, the minutes uh, located behind tab one. Mm -hmm. um, could I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Nope. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the minutes are approved. The first item on our agenda is the introduction of Andrea Vaughn Johnson, who is the new head of youth services. Uh, Anthony, do you want to introduce Andrea? Do you want to introduce yourself? Or? <laughs> Welcome, Andrea. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your, your background? Sure. Um, and be sure to talk to where um, people do watch this on TV, so make sure you talk close to the microphone. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Andrea Von Johnson. I've, I have. Is that microphone on? Doesn't sound awfully close. Nice. Is it on? Yes. You got it? Okay. Is it? Okay. Yes. It's hard to turn. You're behind you. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to speak up. Thank all right. you. I have over 20 years' experience in public libraries, all in the New York area. Uh, I wor have worked uh, as a suburban and urban libraries in that area. My family and I relocated to the Chicago area three years ago when I've been taking care of my son full time and I'm very excited to be back at work and to have landed at, at Wilmette. Great. We're happy to have you. Thank and you. Tell us a little bit about your passion for children in terms of some of the programs that you are looking forward to. Sure. Uh, I get very excited about sparking curiosity in our youth, promoting a culture of learning. Um, some of my professional interests are engaging reluctant readers. Um, engaging, I'm sorry, what? Reluctant readers reluctant and struggling readers. readers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, finding ways to create a reading community in our library, to have a visibility for that community um, through our programming and displays, connecting readers to each other, um, finding ways for readers to share what they're reading with each other. Um, it's one of my professional interests. I'm very excited to get back to doing story time again. Um, in my last role, I was coordinator of school age services at Brooklyn Public Library for seven years. So I was working in an office and going to a lot of meetings. I'm very glad to be back in a role where I can do some direct public service and also some programming. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I have a strong interest in school age programming as well. Um, Children's librarianship is doing wonderful work and research into early childhood and literacy. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to see as much attention into the, the uh, developmental needs of ages 6 to 12. Mm -hmm. And we're doing some great things with maker programs and STEAM and other literacy programs. And I'd love to see more of that. Um, mm -hmm. Very interested in um, bringing our programs more into the community, more visibility at community events. Mm -hmm. um, I could go on and on. Okay. <laughs> Those are some <laughs> some of my interests. Yeah, well, well, just, welcome. Thank you. Well, one more question. Uh, just curiosity. What is something that you did prior at the library that you just waxed euphoric over because it was so good or so fun? Or oh, whatever? sure. Okay. Uh, in Brooklyn, I managed the summer reading program uh, for all 59 locations. Whoa. So yes. Yeah, <laughs> so. Uh, we had uh, a website where children posted reviews. We had a very large uh, launch event with thousands of people that it would attend with celebrity guests. And, um, there was a lot of excitement around summer reading there. And um, we signed up over 100,000 kids to, to make a promise for reading. Um, but the exciting part of that was that we were getting the message out to the youth in the community about how wonderful and fun the library is and mm -hmm. how you know, valuable reading is and get that message to the parents. Um, so that's a program that's dear to my heart. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good. Well, thank you. We look forward to hearing more, you know, about programs as you implement them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, we, the next item is a, a presentation of our outdoor renovation project, and for that we have um, Jody 
Mariana, who's been from Tesco, who has been working um, on this project. Um, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Can you all hear me if I speak here? Yeah. Rick's not here to tell me yet. Yeah, we'll have to, <laughs> can't hear we have to check with Rick. <laughs> it's more, if you can, you be seen. Great. Well, tell me if I need to speak up higher, but um, thank you for having me. Again, my name is Jody Mariano. I am a principal landscape architect with Tesca Associates. Uh, Tesca, uh, we are community planners and landscape architects based nearby in Evanston. We've been here there for 45 years. I haven't been there for 45 years. I've <laughs> only been there for 17. Um, but we, um, I was invited this evening just to speak a little bit about our process and what we've been working on together with the library relative to the landscape project. So I'm going to try and do this in 10 minutes. Um, but I just want to mention that it's been a very collaborative process with the committee. Um, we really do invite and welcome more comments. Uh, it's not a finished product at this point, but I'm going to tell you kind of where we're at at this point. So uh, Tesco is engaged in July of 2017 to work with the library to produce uh, what we call a landscape master plan. The landscape master plan was done um, as a committee-led process. So there is a landscape committee that was formed. It was an ad hoc committee. Um, we met several times throughout the course of between you know 2017 and now. And there are two products that have come out of that process so far. One is a master plan document, which some of you may have seen. It um, looks like this on the cover. The second thing that came out of the process at, at the close of the master plan document was a more technical document, which is a 90% construction document. And this is geared to ultimately solicit um, bids from contractors to install portions of the landscape. So um, I'll speak a little bit about that. But um, the planning area that we were tasked to look at is behind me here. And this is the air photograph of the library. So Wilma Avenue is here. Here is the library building. Here is the parking lot um, that has the red color because it's got the pavers on it. So when we were first brought in, um, uh, the design direction that we were given was to help the library think about a master plan for all of the exterior grounds within the campus area. And um, by the way, please don't touch our newly paved parking lot. So this was really intended to stay as is. Um, but the things that we did look at is we looked at um, how to improve plantings within the parking lot, um, how to uh, preserve some of the great things that are happening with the sculpture garden that are, or the seating garden that's here. Uh, what you're looking at in this era photo is the geothermal system being installed, um, but there are quite a few existing native trees or mature trees that you know we wanted to preserve. One of the things that we were asked to do was to help the library redefine the outdoor lawn area here and the entry plaza here to make it more welcoming for people to come in, provide more places to sit, and also support the great programming that's happening um, from youth services and, and other parts of the library. So uh, to do all of that, plus we spent some time talking about what could happen on this Wilmette Avenue frontage. Uh, if anybody has gone back in the archives of our earlier concepts, there were some more elaborate concepts back then that looked at more playful, more garden-esque type things. In the end, what we were asked to do by the committee was to uh, create an uh, experiential landscape, a garden path, that could go through the native landscape and provide access to the building planters that are up against this wall here and provide an accessible path. Today, the curved path does not meet accessibility standards. Um, so with all those things, there's a couple of things about our committee process. When we meet with the committee, when we met with the committee, we take in input, we take in ideas, we look at examples from other parts of the country, we produce plans, we come back, we review them, we hone them in. So it's back and forth and back and forth a few times. Um, and so we're constantly honing in on those things. Um, and so I'm pleased to hear that we're talking about plantings, because I think that those are the types of things that need to be sorted out. <clears throat> So as the master plan uh, came through, the resulting master plan looked at not only all those things that I just mentioned, but we also talked about signage. We talked about facade improvements. We talked about sculptures. We talked about lots of things that really were left at the master plan level and, and not moved forward into the construction document level. 
<laughs> so we put together cost estimates and that helped the committee and the board be as uh, financially and fiscally responsible as they could be in selecting what projects should move forward into this document, this technical document that we're still working on. Mm -hmm. The elements that were intended to go as the first phase of plantings did not include facade improvements. They did not include sculptures. They really are relegated to hardscape elements, planting elements, lighting, and some modest signage. So that is what we're working on. We have been working on right now. We've taken that through a 50% level review and a 90% level review, and that's where it sits right now. So it's not complete, um, but it's um, getting closer to become ready for contractors to put a bid together to, to price this thing. Um, as far as the budget that's been um, assigned to the construction document so far is in the range of $700,000, and that covers all those items that I just mentioned. Um, a couple of things about highlights of the plan. I'm going to put this around here. And this is also on the library's website. <clears throat> so a couple of um, things to mention. So uh, I didn't have a... Uh, I'm going to flip this back around. So up at the north side of the parking lot, there are a couple of existing trees that would stay, but the ground cover beneath the trees needs to be replaced. And so that was one of the goals of, <coughs> of this area. There are also some very modest things in the, I'm pointing to the wrong thing. Here's the, here's the strip here. Mm -hmm. And a couple of landscape islands that need some drainage to be addressed. That's pretty minor stuff. Then working our way down to the south, just to orient you, here is the north edge of the library wall. Here's the south edge of the parking lot. So this ellipse garden would remain as it is, but include some additional features, like an additional tree, a couple of additional benches. This was an opportunity the committee saw to incorporate a sign to capture people that are coming off of the parking lot and guide them in. Mm -hmm. The other elements um, of this area are to uh, replace the sidewalk here in here with a snow melt system beneath. That was a, a great source of discussion within the committee was to uh, protect the carpets on the inside, uh, not have to do salting anymore, and so they felt that this was gonna be a great safety benefit to the public. Uh, this plaza area today is a much wider concrete. It's narrowed uh, slightly. Uh, incorporate more space for green space, but incorporate some more of this bluestone paving. The committee felt that the bluestone vocabulary that was set up here by this reading garden was something they wanted to repeat. And so this lawn area here is framed by a, a larger ellipse and it's anchored so that we provide some more buffering against the road. Even though the library wants to do programming outside, we do want to keep some buffering and separation from the roadway. Um, and also some spaces for um, additional seating, <clears throat> understory plantings, um, a space for a monument sign with a bench on the back side. The committee also got very excited about these seating elements. We have traditional benches out here, but we also have proposed what we call seating pebbles. I'll show you some imagery of those, but they're precast concrete, seat height, rounded mm -hmm. elements that people can sit on. You can sit a few people to a pebble. Um, the library felt like they really liked the idea of the sculptural, playful elements in the landscape. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the the, the existing butterfly garden today, the native garden. Um, again, the, the um, building planter up against the building is this dashed line here. Uh, today it's not accessible, so we were tasked with can we create an accessible path that meets ADA code, draws people into this area, allows maintenance crews to maintain this area here, and provide sort of a garden walk. So the idea is that there would still be a way to get through uh, the Wilmette Avenue sidewalk, but a more experiential place that you can um, have some uh, interpretive signage and some signage that it describes what the plantings are and, and to help draw some of the um, programming outside. The uh, areas down here would have um, additional uh, landscape plantings beneath the existing linden trees. The hawthorns along the alley need to be replaced, and so they would be replaced also with some, some plantings. Um, so I know that the, um, we, the Garden Club has put together some questions, and I wanted to at least address some of those things if it helps the discussion moving forward. So a couple of things. Um, one is, you know, why reduce the lawn area? So 
The lawn area does occupy, you know, more space here. It has been shifted to try and concentrate the activity within this area and keep it separated and buffered from the from the roadway. We have incorporated additional lawn space here after the um, the library staff you know, requested some additional lawn, but generally the anticipation is to focus activity closer to the building facade. Um, the question about why remove the garden area, the butterfly garden area, and relocate the pathway and the apple tree. So you, there are a lot of things that are happening in there today. Um, accessibility was the main concern. That really was the thing that drove uh, this mm -hmm. process was can don't have an accessible path there today. And so the library felt at the time if we wanted to add an accessible path, maybe we could rethink where that path goes. Could it be something that's a little bit more experiential, something that provides access to the planters that are up along the building? It was just an idea. Um, it's the kind of thing that we can certainly continue to talk about. But that's what this is responding to. Um, there is a, you know, in, in the spirit of creating spaces for people to cluster and gather, this was intended to be sort of a mini entry gathering space that could draw people in with some interpretive signage uh, to help them understand a little bit more.